One thing that makes the original take of the Stars Alpha team's long night in the Spencer estate particularly special is the sheer number of possible paths the story can take. It's all surface level, of course. Your choice of character makes a difference, and thereafter there are multiple endings, depending on who you help out to make it out of the nightmare in one piece. But there's more than that, and certain decisions you make can impact scenes that play out along the way. This is true of the 2002 remake, but it's even more prevalent in the 1996 original. I recently picked up a copy of the original PC version of Resident Evil in all its Windows 95 glory. This is particularly neat because, once I can get the thing running on a modern machine, I'll get to see these neat machine guns I keep hearing about for each character to mow down the undead hordes with. More importantly, however, I can go through the files of the game, in particular the audio, and have a real tinker. You know, make some really ridiculous things, like, say, this. You guys are idiots. Barry is the tyrant. What's what? going oh, on? No! I'm really embarrassed. I've been thinking something is wrong with Barry. Jill, don't be angry. <coughs> so imagine my surprise that in my explorations, I have stumbled across a few things. Now, there are bigger authorities on this game than I, despite how many times I've run through it. But there seems to be unused audio in the files of this port. And I don't just mean the odd extra zombie moan. I mean some really intriguing eyebrow-raising stuff. Okay, first example. Barry Burns' line after defeating Plant 42. Here's what the version in-game sounds like. Don't mention it. What a monster. I can't believe... What the hell is this place anyway? But there's also a second take hiding in these files. So here it is, acted completely different. As if Barry is suddenly suspicious that he's about to become an internet meme. Don't mention it. What a monster. I can't believe. What the hell is this place anyway? Don't worry Barry, you're a legend in our eyes. So much so that we did an entire podcast dedicated to your name and your glorious beard. But more than just alternate line reads, there's something else that was striking enough that it warranted a video. In the audio folder marked voice appears to be complete conversations that, as far as I am aware, do not take place at any point in the final product. Now, being as open to different pathways as the cutscenes in this game tend to be, it's unlikely, but possible, that these can be stumbled across, but even if that is the case, these should be counted as very rare. However, these appear to be totally cut conversations. Now, it is fairly evident that where these scenes would happen for the most part, although the specific triggers, we don't know. Let's set the scene for this first one. Chris and Rebecca have made it to the underground of the Arclay facility and have found their way into a room with a large projector. This is a whole conversation that seems to be missing from the final game. Rebecca, you're safe. I saw you in the garden. I've caught up with you at last. But it's a strange place, isn't it? Is this a meeting room or something? Seems like it. Does it work? Yeah. Let's take a look. I feel like we're having a secret meeting. Let's go. I think I'm beginning to understand. As we all know, discovering the projector is a really key moment in Resident Evil storytelling, as it allows both the character and the player together to discover that Wesker has been an inside man all along, and is, in some part, behind the horrors that Alpha Team have faced. And best of all, like all the files you can read, there's no real big cutscene or juxtaposition to it. Your own personal reaction is part of the game. But it seems as though at one point Chris and Rebecca would have discovered this moment together. Now remember earlier when we were talking about alternate takes of existing lines? There are actually several from this scene. It's really interesting that this either rare or now completely cut scene is in the files at all let alone with two interpretations of it. Here's another run-through. Rebecca, you're safe. I'm sorry, the others didn't make it. I know, but I'm happy that you are safe. What is it? A slide projector? Yes, I'll show you. Let's go. I think I'm beginning to understand. Staying with Mr. Redfield and Miss Chambers for the moment, we have yet another conversation that I've never come across in-game. Partly because of when Rebecca would appear in the underground labs, and how little Chris interacts with her down there. 
But this one implies that, at one point, both STARS members would go to the power room together. Here's the conversation. Ah! Uh, ouch! <laughs> Rebecca! What are you doing in this place? Oh, Chris! I was almost attacked by a monster, but I escaped through the other draft hole. Then I came... Ouch! Well, I'm glad you're all right. Don't go out alone. Yes, sir! By the way, where are we? It looks like a power room, but I'm not sure. How about you? Did you find something? Chris, look at this! What's the matter? It's a triggering system for a bomb! What? Great! Wow, I've never seen such a big bomb! How come... It's dangerous! Don't touch it! Not content to be left out of having deleted scenes, even Jill has at least one on the cutting room floor. It appears that both she and Barry also have a scene in the projector room. Though admittedly, this could be elsewhere as it's a little bit more inconsistent. Let's roll that VT. Looks like a meeting room. Does it work? I'm going to try it. Oh, what is this? Let's get going. You're quiet. What are you worrying about? Nothing. Don't worry. And that, at the moment, is pretty much it. It appears that these three conversations are the only ones in the audio files that are wholesale removed. But nonetheless, we found them interesting enough to cast a little light on them. Perhaps they were removed for pacing reasons, or storage space on the PS1 disc, or time constraints. Who knows? But whatever the case, the audio still exists, even on ports of the original. What did you think of these conversations? Would you have liked to have seen them actually fleshed out in the game? Sound off in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with everything that we do. This has been Steve for First Aid Spray. Always be excellent to each other, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!